Hello everyone. This is Greg Taylor to give you the Coastal Zone Soil Survey Focus Team update for the 2021 National Cooperative Soil Survey Conference. Uh, please understand I'm going to go over just some of the projects. We have currently over 140 projects in various forms of, of, of either being planned or, or in progress, so I can only just hit, hit a few of them for the allotted time that I have. I'm going to start off first of all, uh, this picture here that you see is this young man is Rex Ellis with the St. John's River Water Management District. Um, he's pointing to the first core that was pulled from the uh, Banana River Lagoon. Uh, Rex came to the Coastal Zone team years ago wanting uh, assistance uh, to see if soils could help be one of the keys to um, the effects from the harmful algae blooms that had just ravaged the Indian River system. Uh, recently making news because of the dial from the SAV, the big restoration projects that we've got planned based off our soils information to help with the manatees who are currently starving in the area. And uh, if many of you may have saw that on the news, but he's pointing to the first core that we pulled out of the Banana River, which is just going to be a small portion of the greater Indian River Lagoon system. This uh, project will incorporate digital soil mapping as well as ecological site descriptions. We've also begun focused projects specifically for blue carbon. Um, also, West Galveston Bay is proceeding. It's a large project. Um, it's also got a, a quite a lot of attention for shellfish and other uh, aquaculture or restoration projects. Again, it is incorporating digital soil mapping and ESDs in its survey. We're also sampling for blue carbon in Chesapeake Bay in cooperation with Virginia Institute of Marine Science. Um, there's blue carbon project CESU agreements with University of Massachusetts, URI, UMD, NC State, and VIMS. This is a very large project where we're sampling for carbon from all the way from Massachusetts down to North Carolina. And then also another project of note is Long Island Sound project, which will be used to rank sites for restoration. Some other projects and items of interest that I thought I would share with the, with the group is we're currently working to ship, you'll see in the, the bottom left of this drone footage, uh, one of our boats. We're currently trying to, to take a similar boat and ship it to Puerto Rico for work uh, on the island, but specifically initially for Hobos Bay. We've been contacted by Bureau of Land Management and Bureau of Land Reclamation and other partners to provide a base or a foundation for restoration and other projects. They were they reached out to us wanting a scientific foundation for decisions moving forward with the Salton Sea. If you're not familiar with that, you can look up. There's some great YouTube videos about it. But, um, but bottom line is they wanted to know about the soil conditions before the water uh, receded off off the area and they found out what we do and so anyway we're going to be assisting with with that project um, we're hoping and in, in, in the early early uh, planning phases of a workshop and then this workshop we want to share methods and plans when it's associated with blue carbon we want to talk about what's worked and what hasn't uh, not not just for our our internal partners and those involved in this conference but those outside we hope to uh, ultimately get everyone on the same page so that we're we're um, talking the same lingo, if you will, when it comes to blue carbon. Big shout out to Deb Sarabian and Christy Wiley. Uh, Deb, for the last few years, has put together an annual report. Uh, the 2021 annual report, report is currently in review, but it'll soon be coming out. You can get it on the Coastal Zone website. Um, it's a great tool for, for explaining and, and, and selling what we do. We got some new technology to highlight. We've got an EdgeTech toad array sonar. Uh, it's a side scan, bottom scan sonar. It allows us to get some preliminary data before we start an actual coring process. Um, I want to talk several minutes here about Jerome Langlinay. He um, he is our unofficial head, if you will, of research and development. For years, we fought with fiber coring with these big concrete vibrators that run off a gas engine has a big cumbersome heavy cable that goes to a heavy head and it's, you can see here it's, it's quite a lot of work to stand these up and advance them and uh, Jerome being who he is looked at it and invented a better mousetrap so 
no longer do we have to fool with these gas engines and the, the, their uh, inconsistent nature, let me say. All that's now replaced by this little orange box cylinder you see here. It's an electric vibrator that now plugs into the power supply system on the boats, the airboat and pontoon boats, and allows you to simply hook an extension cord to it and flip a switch, and it replaces the, the big gas engine heavy cables. And there it is in its final configuration. Drones also come up with a invention uh, to pull cores in highly fluid soils. Uh, to, up until recently, we, we had a lot of problems with what we call core rot or compaction of our samples. What Jerome did is he basically turned uh, cap plugs, our pressure plugs that we use to, to hold pressure inside these cores when we pull them, to turn it into a plunger on a syringe. And as the pipe is advanced down with a fiber core, it creates a suction and pulls the core, pulls the fluid soils up into the core. Our future plans are always, as, as I'm going to touch on this a little bit, but tying coastal zone soil survey and our efforts to sediment management. We are always looking to get other folks involved. That is always going to be our goal of ours is to sell what we do and expand our base. Um, we also want to have a comprehensive practice standards, if you will. We want to, um, whether you're talking about boats or how to, how to pull the cores or all the way down to, to lab processes and, and how to process the samples, um, we want something that whether you're with NRCS or, or whatever college or, or agency, that you'll grab our guide and, and, and follow it. So we want it to be accepted broadly and so, in other words, we, we want a way that, that everyone's talking the same lingo and we're comparing apples to apples. Uh, we're working to develop ways to share data so we can get real-time updates on projects. That, that also allows um, not only managers to know what's going on, but it also allows uh, teams that rotate in and off a project to pick up where others left off. But bottom line, we were always struggling, fighting to stay relevant. We want to keep Coastal Zone Soil Survey in, uh, at the forefront of and involved in things like farm bill development, blue carbon saltwater intrusion, and sea level rise. Now, specifically why I'm talking about sediment is things like this. This is the only uh, instance where this has come across my desk, but this is a SETI match tool, and what this group is, is they're just wanting to know what, what can we do with dredge material. This is specifically to San Francisco Bay, but we've had other, other uh, interests and discussions from, from all across the United States. And bottom line is Coastal Zone Soil Survey can help with this. But we're also always, as a team, looking to see what's coming. We want to stay relevant. Right now, a big discussion and concern on many people is saltwater intrusion is what do we do? We're losing ag land every day to saltwater intrusion. Is there alternate crops out there? Is there a market for those crops? Um, what can we do as an agency to assist with that? Because if you keep up with the news, uh, weekly if not daily, you see these articles talking about how farmland is being lost to saltwater intrusion. And it's everywhere. It's not just, uh, just it, it, it's North Carolina, Florida, California, and all points around in between. Another uh, topic I mentioned earlier is blue carbon. I attended a webinar, and during that webinar, it was mentioned uh, the sources for soils data, so, so sources for blue carbon data and where they went to get their information. You will notice Web Soil Survey, Soil and Plant Science Division, NRCS is not mentioned in these slides. So we want to change that. There's groups out there that focus on coastal carbon and we're not involved. What do we want? We want to be involved. So um, right now, to be honest, there's some folks out there and some belief that, that our data is not is not that useful. We're trying to change that. One thing that we've noticed that I feel like a lot of people haven't is when it comes down to depth of, of uh, this is a uh, this slide here and I just want to give a shout out to Lori Grzynski. She's got a poster. She's a master's student at NC State and she's going to uh, she's presenting this poster today. This is just a slide out of it. Please uh, please look for that poster and listen in and ask her questions about it. But the bottom line of this is that so many other folks out there that are sampling carbon, they're looking at, um, they're only going 50 centimeters deep, at most 100 centimeters deep. 
our data is showing, because we go to 200 centimeters to classify soils, that carbon is important, and, and carbon actually often increases below the, the 50 to 100 centimeter range. And I have a good example of that here. You'll see here, you can see where the water line once was, and as sea levels have risen and pushed this line back and brought this beach into this freshwater cypress swamp, um, it's, it's covering up the organic matter. This is what it looks like standing on the ground, and you can just see how the sand has rolled back over, and, is, and, is, and the, these forests are falling off into the water, being uh, covered by sand, and these, this carbon is being trapped under the sand. So, and if you'll look here, this is not a, a great core. Understand we were trying to get cores and a lot of wood, a lot of woody debris, which is not, not conducive to, to fiber coring, but, but it was the only way we could get through the sand. But if you only go 50 centimeters deep, you're seeing sand and you're not understanding all this carbon is trapped in there under it. So we had several cores where if you only sample to 50 to 100 centimeters, you're not getting the whole picture. Going to 200 centimeters um, needs to become the norm because of what we're seeing. So, what do we need? As a Coastal Zone team, we need help. Um, as I said earlier, we currently have uh, over 140 projects either waiting or being planned or being implemented. Um, we always are looking for help, whether it's in the field, the lab, or with logistics. Um, we need teams who are, who, are, who are willing. I do have a list of folks. I appreciate many of you have reached out to me willing to help with this. But just please understand, my caveat is always, this is not for everyone. It tends to be long days, and it's, it's, it's not always a very forgiving environment on these boats. So, um, But if you're interested, reach out to us. Go to our website. Send me an email. Uh, I keep a list. And um, if you want to know more, just contact me. We need to continue training. We need more boat operators. We need more people that know what a few of us know. Same thing, we want to introduce people early, whether it's in boot camp, Soil Science Institute, Basic Soil Survey. We want to start uh, letting people know that we're out there within our agency and what's, what's involved in it and um, just see if you're interested. Of course, always, the more people, the more projects, need more equipment. Boats are not, are not cheap, they're hard to come by, but we can always, we always need more. And honestly, we want to be included but we want to be the source for carbon and coastal soils information. As I showed in the previous slides, that water is honestly muddy. And um, there's a lot of people trying to, to, to say things that I feel like are, are inconsistent with, with, um, with reality. We need, uh, if any of you ever seen the boat tour videos I've done, you know we need help with videos. We need a better social media footprint. Again, ways to sell to the modern audience. And we need assistance with that. And uh, better methods. We're moving from a um, from doing smaller sites to an industrial level. We're putting more cores down in more places every year. Is there a better way to do it? Currently, it's labor intensive and it's honestly slow. Uh, with the backlog that we have, it would be great to figure out a way to move faster. That's what we're looking for. Easier, faster is always better. Um, if it's possible, we're, if you have any ideas, reach out to us. And so um, that's it. Um, I want to give a big shout out right here to um, Jerome Langlanace. As I mentioned him before, he's, um, he's the head of our, our research and development, but he's just, a, just um, a great guy. And I've had the pleasure of working with him for the last several years. He's a, he's a big asset, an important member of the Coastal Zone Soil Survey team, and is our Soil Scientist of the Year. There's my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me in any way for any questions or clarification. And um, if you got any questions, you can ask those during the question and answer session of this presentation. That's all I have. Thank you so much for attending.